Good morning. morning. Well, welcome, even though uh, you made it through some rain. It is a wonderful Mother's Day uh, this morning. And just a a few announcements. Uh, One thing uh, did not make the bulletin. A joy we have is that Nathaniel graduated summa cum laude in bioengineering this week from the University of Pittsburgh. He'll be working as a VAD engineer at UPMC Presbyterian, so congratulations. And congratulations to everybody who has made it through this school year, parents alike. I know it was a difficult one. Um, And we have an announcement uh, from our deacons for Mother's Day. Thank you, and, and they're all over in the coffee area. Yeah, wonderful, wonderful. Uh, join me in our call to worship. Oh, one more thing. So I, I was on vacation last week, but I still um, met with a couple who's going to have a wedding here, and they gave me this mug. I just thought I'd share it with you. Uh, be careful or you'll end up as my sermon illustration. My kids know all too well. Join me now in our call to worship. See what love has been given to us, that we should be called children of God. By this we know love that Jesus Christ has come in the flesh and lived and died that God's love might be made plain among us. Therefore, let us not love in word or in speech, but in deed and in truth. In the love we share and the love we freely give to another, we experience God. So let us praise God and live in love and friendship toward the human family in all our actions. Let us worship God. Join me in our first hymn, When Morning Gilds the Skies.
Now is the time uh, for our call to confession. Too often our hearts are cold and without gratitude. Too often our hands are passive and unwilling to carry out acts of mercy. Too often we are indeed alienated and separated from our better self, separated and alienated from God. Let us confess our separation and alienation. Let us join together in the prayer of confession. Dear God, we realize that we have not made ourselves and our homes the dwelling place of your love that we would like. We long for the day when each family everywhere might live in peace. Yet we confess that even within ourselves there is so much anxiety, fear, and distrust. Look upon us with kindness and mercy, rule in our hearts and our world, so that we might walk in your path, model your love, and share our hearts with others. Amen. Let us confess our sins silently. The welcoming grace of God is sure for each and for all. Our dwelling place in God is secure. Receive the forgiveness of God and be restored to a right relationship with God and one another. Thanks be to God. Join me in the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Ghost, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth on the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Of reading. The earth is the Lord's and all that is in it, the world and those who live in it. For he has founded it on all the seas and established it on the rivers. Who shall ascend the hill of the Lord? Who shall stand in his holy place? Those who have clean hands and pure hearts, who do not lift up their souls to what is false, do not swear deceitfully. They will receive blessing from the Lord and vindication from the God of their salvation. Such is the company of those who seek him, who seek the face of the God of Jacob.
Our Old Testament uh, scripture reading uh, is a pretty traditional one read on Mother's Day, and it's what our sermon was about last year. But our New Testament reading is a little different. I'll read the Old Testament one first from Proverbs 31. A wife of noble character who can find. She is worth more, far more than rubies. Her husband has full confidence in her and lacks nothing of value. She brings him good, not harm, all the days of her life. She selects wool and flax and works with eager hands. She is like the merchant ships bringing her food from afar. She gets up while it is still night. She provides food for our family and portions for her female servants. She considers a field and buys it. Out of her earnings, she plants a vineyard. She sets about her work vigorously. Her arms are strong for her tasks. She sees that her trading is profitable and her lamp does not go out at night. In her hand, she holds the distaff and grasps the spindle with her fingers. She opens her arms to the poor and extends her hands to the needy. When it snows, she has no fear for her household, for they are, for all of them are clothed in scarlet. She makes coverings for her bed. She is clothed in fine linen and purple. Her husband is respected at the city gate, where he takes his seat among the elders of the land. She makes linen garments and sells them and supplies the merchants with sashes. She is clothed with strength and dignity. She can laugh at the days to come. She speaks with wisdom. Faithful instruction is on her tongue. She watches over the affairs of her household, does not eat the bread of idleness. Her children arise and call her blessed, her husband also, and he praises her. Many women do noble things, but you surpass them all. Charm is deceptive and beauty is fleeting. But a woman who fears the Lord is to be praised. Honor her for all that her hands have done, and let her works bring her praise at the city gate. Now, that's the traditional Mother's Day reading, but I have a little less traditional one from Matthew 14. Immediately, Jesus made the disciples get into the boat and go ahead of him to the other side. While he dismissed the crowd, after he had dismissed them, he went up on the mountainside by himself to pray. And later that night, he was there alone, and the boat was already a considerable distance from the land, buffeted by the waves because the wind was against it. Shortly before dawn, Jesus went out to them walking on the lake. When the disciples saw him walking on the lake, they were terrified. It's a ghost, they said, and cried out in fear. But Jesus immediately said to them, Take courage, it is I. Do not be afraid. Lord, if it is you, Peter replied, tell me to come to you on the water. Come, he said. Then Peter got down out of the boat, walked on the water, and came toward Jesus. But then he saw the wind, he was afraid, and he began to sink. He cried out, Lord, save me. And immediately Jesus reached out his hand and caught him. You of little faith, he said, why did you doubt? And when they climbed into the boat, the wind died down. Then those who were in the boat worshipped him, saying, Truly, you are the Son of God. This is the word of our Lord. Thanks be to God. Well, you know, when I think about that first reading, it sounds like a mother's work is pretty serious. But you know, every mother of good character has to deal with a little bit of craziness. So, for instance, uh, Elliot is learning to dress himself and to undress himself. Unfortunately, he's only understood the undressing part so far, and, uh, and that happens all the time. So please, don't be shocked, uh, you know, at any time during the service. Um, we're working on the getting dressed part. 
You know, every, every couple, every family gets to know all of the characteristics of each member. Each member not only has their own personality, but in most cases, each person is a character. I can always tell what the day is going to be like. My coffee pot is pretty fancy, uh, and, uh, and Trisha has told me she does not understand how to prepare that uh, coffee in the morning. I think she's just too busy, but uh, you know, I know whether it's going to be a good day uh, every morning. If I go down and she's pushed the button, it's going to be a good day. If she doesn't push the button, I did something wrong. So parents have different child rearing uh, mentalities. Um, she's all about uh, giving warm baths before bedtime to make sure the children are clean and rested and relaxed. Me, if it's a warm day, we can hose them off. We have to take turns and, uh, and share in responsibility, and we have to give each other time as well. You know, Khalil Gibran said that marriage is like a temple, and each person in that relationship is like a pillar in the temple. If the pillars are too close together, that temple roof will collapse. And it's the same as those, temp that those pillars are too far apart. They have to be just in the right uh, location to hold up that temple roof, which is the family. So she has a Monday knitting night. I have a Sunday movie night. And... Uh, and we have time together the rest of the week. So today is a special day devoted to honoring all mothers past and present, natural mothers, grandmothers, adopted mothers, foster mothers alike, teachers, women in our lives who have dedicated their energies to shape us into better people and into better Christians. I think each of us can probably tell at least one interesting story about our childhood. Last Mother's Day, our sermon focused on that Old Testament passage. A capable wife and mother is far more precious than jewels. That passage seems a natural fit for this day. Our mothers are wonderful examples of Christ's love for his children. It is a giving selfless, unconditional, and sacrificial love. And we honor them today for those glorious qualities. A modern woman is called to be many things, a wife, mother, cook, cleaner, fashion consultant, professional business person, counselor, supporter, children's tutor, nurse, confidant, and chauffeur. To be a mother in today's society is to be a very busy and tired person. About two years after having each of our children, usually when the youngest child is sleeping through the night and sleep deprivation is not so severe, Trisha and I would look at each other at the end of the day. And she would bring up the subject of having another child. And naturally, my responsibilities would be enumerated at length. But then in my mind, I'm thinking to myself, how bad could I really have been if she's thinking about another kid? You know, you might wonder what today's New Testament passage and the following sermon has to do with Mother's Day. But how many times have you heard the phrase, she thinks her kid can walk on water? Looking back, I think my mom thought about me in much the same way. All mothers and fathers are proud of their children. All through scripture, 
we're reminded not only of the powerful father-like figure in the Old Testament, but also of the loving, caring Messiah in Jesus Christ. Perhaps not so much feminine, but surely a nurturing figure. Christ watches over us in much the same way as a mother might, if she could. Our mother carries us when we cannot walk on our own, when we need to be comforted or fed, when she feels that we are ready, she puts us down to walk on our own. Sometimes we have to be coaxed a little bit to walk on our own, even when we doubt our steadiness, yet she's never far away. And if we begin to falter or fall, she's right there to catch us. Mothers place their children's needs before their own. One of our greatest instincts is to call on our mother when we are in need. As Christians, we call on Christ in much the same instinctual way. In today's passage, we see a story about a man's lack of personal faith, and an instant later, his wonderful example of ultimate faith. Now, you might think it's the other way around. First, walking on water, and then doubting. But I tend to see it a little differently. Jesus had just fed the 5,000 with a few loaves of bread and some fish. A miracle. He told the disciples, go ahead of me. I'll meet you over there. Telling them he would follow later, and he dismissed the crowd. After dismissing the crowd, Jesus went to the mountainside and he prayed for a long time. When evening came, he found himself all alone with the boat quite a ways off. The weather had grown stormy and he could see the small boat being buffeted by the wind and waves. Peter was on the deck of the boat. It was his turn to take watch. We know it was between three and 6 a.m. because it was the fourth watch. Romans divided the night into four segments. Jesus was walking out to the small boat, walking on the water. I think this is a unique miracle. There was no one else around but Peter and a few disciples. I'd almost see this miracle as one of necessity, though this surely doesn't negate the significance of the act itself, Jesus had to get to the boat. He did not do this for anyone's benefit, like feeding the 5,000. There was no one else around other than the disciples. But Peter and the other disciples saw Jesus. They were afraid, thinking at first that he was a ghost. But Jesus called to them, saying, Take courage, don't be afraid, it's me. Peter replied, Lord, if it's you, tell me to come to you on the water. And Jesus did. He said, come to me. So this is how I begin to see this passage a little differently. Picture Peter's first steps upon the water as you might imagine an infant learning to walk. His mother stands before him some distance away. The child looks to the mother as she calls him towards her. The infant takes his first step, a bit wobbly, but still sure because his eyes remain on his mom. He is sure in his resolve. He has faith in his own power to walk, faith because his mother told him he could. He takes a few more steps, and there are always a few wobbles at first. At this point, one of two things can happen. The child might look around and think, hey, I'm doing this, and walks the rest of the way. Or the child can begin to doubt in his own ability and begin to fall. When this happens, and the child begins to sway, he calls out, Mommy, 
And just before he hits the ground, the mother rushes to his aid, catching him and lifting him up again. The child lost that personal faith in himself, but he never lost that ultimate faith in his mother. Peter was much the same way. Jesus called for him to come. It was a personal test of his faith, for Jesus had said, if you have faith as small as a mustard seed, you can move mountains, or in this case, walk on water. Peter took his first steps onto the water. He was doing it. He was walking on the water. His faith was strong. His eyes were on Jesus. Then he realized that he was far from the boat. He was amidst the wind and the waves. His eyes were no longer on Christ. And he began to doubt his own faith. He began to sink. Yet, he never lost that ultimate faith, which is deep down within us as Christians. He called out, Lord, save me. And immediately, Jesus reached out his hand and lifted him up. And they walked together back to the boat. I don't think Jesus was rebuking Peter's lack of faith, but rather laughingly joking with his friend. Ah, you have little faith. Why'd you doubt? You could have done it. We read later in the book of Acts that Peter does gain this faith and this self-assuredness in his faith needed to do miracles, to allow the Holy Spirit to work through him. We read especially of his healing the sick and the lame in Christ's name. Each of us is called to walk with Jesus, but it's not always on a smooth road like the road we talked about to Emmaus. Sometimes it's strange and troubled situations, often through storms or even what might seem to be unsolid ground. Perhaps we feel that we are sinking. We might feel overwhelmed or drowning. We've talked about miracles, but as we can see from today's passage, sometimes seeing a miracle isn't enough to give someone faith to do the same miracle. I think most of us have that ultimate faith in Jesus, that faith to call on Jesus when we're in need or in trouble. We have faith that Jesus will catch us, that Jesus is our Lord and Savior. But do we have that personal faith in which Jesus tells us? Do we have even the smallest amount? Would we be able to walk with Jesus? Are we able to move mountains? Are we able to walk on water or heal the sick? Every Sunday when our batteries get recharged, I think we can. But if we begin to doubt, then we'll start to sink and falter. When that feeling of doubt begins to take hold, we're worried about ourselves. Can we do it? And we must call on Jesus, but he'll be there. When we moved to our house in Hempfield, the kids no longer had to share bedrooms. So we decided to put inspirational sayings on their walls above their beds, sayings that fit their personalities. Sophia's quote is, she leaves a little sparkle wherever she goes and Tinkerbell is flying at the end of that saying. Zoe says, as soon as I saw you, I knew an adventure was going to happen. There's a picture of Winnie the Pooh. Noah says, let him sleep for when he wakes, he'll move mountains. Elliot's is simple and short, adventure awaits. When we don't doubt, we look at Jesus for strength. 
when we don't need to worry about ourselves. And when that happens, we can begin to walk. We begin to run. We can move mountains. For we are not alone. We just have to take those first steps in trust. And he'll be there if we begin to stumble. So, it's not as if Jesus is asking us to move a literal mountain. Perhaps those mountains are inside ourselves. Perhaps mountains are really our own doubts. Let us give a gift of thanks to those women in our lives today for guidance and nurturing, tolerance and understanding, inspiration. For all of this, we should be truly grateful. Christian women cannot only bring a child up in faith, but they can be an example, a model of faith themselves. Faith in us and faith in God. To all of us who are still blessed with the physical presence of our mothers, make much of it. While you still have that most precious of all gifts, a loving parent and friend. And for all of us whose mothers are no longer with us in this world, take time to listen to that small voice within you, where you will no doubt experience your mother's presence, for she will always be with you. The guidance that she has given you is present in all good acts that you do, and all of the love that you share. Listen to that still, small voice of God as well. For both parents and God have faith in us. And as Christians, we have faith in God. All we need to do is trust in that faith. To act as if our prayers have already been answered. As if the miracles have already occurred. And we can move those mountains. We can walk on water or perhaps... We can do a few more practical things. We can share God's love with one another. We can accept God's grace in our lives. We can do for others as we would have done for ourselves. Amen. Join me now in our hymn, God of the Women, to the tune of Be Thou My Vision.
pray together as a congregation for joys and concerns. And as I was thinking about our sermon and our church service last night, uh, a few things about prayer uh, and forgiveness came to mind, and I wasn't sure when to share them with you, but I thought this would be an appropriate place in our service. I was talking with a few different people this past week, and the conversation was about prayer and forgiveness, and the person I was talking with uh, said that each night uh, they pray to be forgiven for their sins, but they pray over and over again uh, about this one sin that they committed. And it got me to thinking, I know a lot of people do this, something they regret, they're carrying this burden with them, and, uh, or uh, something that happened in their past, and every night they pray for forgiveness. But in reality, we know that the first time you ask for forgiveness, you are forgiven. So there's something going on there. And what's happening is that once we ask for forgiveness or the Lord's intervention, we need to have faith that it is granted. We don't need to ask over and over again. We simply need to accept God's grace because it is given so freely. All we need to do is ask. So as we, as we pray for God's intervention, uh, sometimes uh, people think God doesn't answer our prayers. And people ask me, well, you know, I pray all the time, but God doesn't answer my prayers. But I think God does answer every prayer. Just because God answers our prayers doesn't mean his answer is yes. Sometimes God answers no. Sometimes God says, maybe, but we'll do it my way. Maybe, but not right now. But God always answers our prayers and we have to trust in God's own reasons for those answers that may not be revealed to us immediately. But over time, when we look back on our lives, we will understand God's ultimate purpose. If you have joys or concerns this morning, please place them on a card or in the offering plate and we will add them to our prayer list or lift them up silently in prayer. Let us pray. Lord God, we thank you for all of the women in our lives, all of the parents, grandparents, the foster parents, the women who have guided us from teachers and Sunday school teachers, friends and family. Lord, we just thank you for their guidance, for their love, for their faith in us that we could be good people and Christians, that we might follow your word. We thank you for their guidance and for their love. We thank you, Lord, for your love, for your sacrifice, for your grace, for your blessings. We know that you answer all of our prayers, and yet we pray your will might be done. Lord, we know that all things are possible through you, and we pray for your intervention in our lives. Lord, we pray for those who are sick, for those who need healing, for those who are in rehabilitation or recovery. Lord, we ask that you be with those who are suffering in grief and loss, that you allow them to feel the presence of the Holy Spirit and know that they are not alone. Lord, we pray for all of those who are struggling with addiction or emotional issues, for those who are searching spiritually. 
Lord, we give you thanks. We pray the way you taught us to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us for our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Join me in our hymn, Come Sing, O Church, in Joy. shine upon you and give you peace now and forevermore. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen.